Welcome to the Trade Talk Showcase on Brownfield. I'm anchor reporter Megan Grubner. With us is Dan Kohler, DeKalb Asgro agronomist. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the 2020 growing season as you look in your part of the world, which is in Minnesota, a little bit different than other some other challenges uh, throughout the Corn Belt. Talk to me a little bit about uh, what we've been seeing and what you've been hearing from growers about 2020. Right. 2020 was, you know, all over the board, really. And in, in general, it was really good. Um, um, but we had our areas with some stress and, you know, it was mostly due to lack of moisture um, during grain fill, um, during the dense stages for the most part. But in general, we started out planting early. Um, we had above average heat units. Um, and then the, ver the, mois the variability came from moisture. We had some growers with their highest yields ever. And then we had some growers, especially corn on corn, um, that where it was dry, that really struggled um, to even have average yields. And it had a lot to do there. It had a lot to do with just lack of rain, it takes rain to make grain. Um, but also it was a late harvest in 2019. And so we didn't get a lot of tillage and prep work done in 2019, the fall 2019, um, to set us up for a successful 2020. When you look at this year, as it relates to uh, prepping for the 2021 growing season, are, in pretty, are, are farmers in a better position uh, when it comes to harvest progress, field work, and the ability to uh, prep uh, the upcoming mm -hmm. crop? Yeah, no, I think we're in a much better um, situation going into um, 2021. We had an early harvest. Um, the, the soils were in good condition, some of the best ever as far as tillage. And so we got tillage done in good shape. Uh, we got some, you know, soil sampling, some fertilizer put on that we needed to. Um, and we got growers getting some tile done that, uh, you know, they, since we have time, they're getting that done as we get ready for spring. So. I think as far as um, residue management and getting everything done that we needed to in the, this fall, we're sitting in very good shape going into the spring of 2021. How does that, being able to, to get those things done that maybe have uh, less pressure when they look ahead to the 2021 planting season, because everything is kind of like hurry up and wait, and then it's, it's rapid fire to get everything accomplished, whether it's planting or it's harvest as well. Does that give them an opportunity to maybe evaluate data more, look at some of that information to to pick the right products to make sure that they're being able to make even better agronomic decisions and set themselves up for a successful uh, growing season and harvest in 2021? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think that, you know, they're just trying to finish up last year when um, people are asking them to make decisions for 2021 inputs or 2020 inputs. And now this year they're done. They've been able to sit down and evaluate and look at, analyze their data in the climate field view um, program, uh, see what products did well, which didn't, you know, what practices did well and which didn't. And I think, you know, Mother Nature always holds the upper hand and it's our job to manage Mother Nature. And so one message I've been telling growers is, you know, we got to make sure we spread a risk, plant a package, um, you know, look at what trait, trait platform um, you need to be planting on your acre for next year, what maturity ranges you need to be planting, um, you know, what weed control program we need to be planting. And I think you, you hit it, the nail on the head that they've had a lot more time to sit back, visit with their consultants, visit with the people that they have to help make their decisions and plan for 2021. When you look ahead to 2021, what are some exciting things that are available for farmers and, and uh, products and traits and technology available to them? Well, you know, from the, we're very excited that we're launching Asgro Extend Flex um, from the Asgro brand. It's, it's, you, know, you know, any product that's sold from Asgro is exclusive to the Asgro brand. But, uh, you know, Extend Flex is going to give growers another tool in their toolbox. It's three modes of action now, herbicide tolerant traits. Um, to help control those tough, um, tough weeds. And so ExtendFlex is going to give them um, the additional tool glufosinate, which is going to be huge. And even more importantly, as an agronomist, you know, we have that extra tool, but we looked at the ExtendFlex germplasm from ASGRO this last year across our stewarded trials, and we saw very good performance on yield and agronomics. 
Uh, we have solid performance on the agronomics specifically. We had solid performance on sudden death syndrome, um, white mold, and IDC, um, as long as as well as standability. So we're excited um, from an ASGO standpoint to be bringing a um, full portfolio um, to for growers in 2021. If folks want to find out more information, what's the best way for them to do so? Sure, I, I, I simply go to www.decalbasgro.com and that'll take you right to our website. Dan, thank you so much for your time today. All right, yeah, thank you. I'm Megan Grebner for Roundfield. Yeah.